Um, blah, 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 blah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Chris and Charlie here with Daily Motor and today we're driving an convertible. That doesn't happen very often. No, there's fewer and fewer convertible cars on the market these days and that is why I think the Z4 deserves oh, credit. And the Thunder Knight Metallic. So, yeah, new as for I'm sure, oh, new for 23, yeah. So this car got a facelift and kind of kind of like an LCI. Super mild. No, Super mild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it did though. It did get an LCI. Did it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. BMW it's really been refreshed. that in their, in their press, because I read through the like press release for 23. Didn't it, did it not get an LCI? I guess it does kind of look exactly the same as the other one. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we may or may not leave that part in, but anyways, here it is, the 2023 BMW Z4 M40i. Did I yeah. get that right? Mm -hmm. Thunder Knight Metallic, it has the M50 years emblems. Yeah. It has the B58 turbo inline six with 382 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. It's rear wheel drive and it has no roof. And a reasonably sized grill. All things considered. That's right. Well, Compared it is massive still, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does look quite still nice. Still some big nostrils, a little bit piggy in the front. I've never been a huge fan of the styling of the front of this car, but everywhere else, it's proper roadster. And, uh, you know, the Z4 has always been one of those, like, always a bridesmaid, never the bride kind of cars in this segment. Kind of because the Boxster exists. So, oh, right. But right. this car is very different than the Boxster, and it should be, uh, it should be noted for that. I like that it has a button for the trunk yes. that's very large and easy to find. Yes. Sometimes I'll be doing winding road drives of cars and mm -hmm. I can't find the trunk and then it makes me look like an idiot. Yeah. Well, you'll just blame the car then. Uh, pretty good space. Mm -hmm. Place for milk? Oh, yeah. BMW is really good about putting uh, places yeah, for milk. That's because I had an M850i Grand Coupe back in like 2018 and I got milk in it and I hit the brakes really hard and the milk sloshed forward and went all over the trunk. <laughs> So ever since then, they've been so, sure to so put... So we've done, we've done milk in a couple BMWs. Mm -hmm. That's really That's why they've been putting nuts in all of them. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this badging is too large. Take a step back and look. It's just stop. It doesn't need any. I would take both of these off. Yeah. Yeah. I'd take the plate off, too, so I could go do four badgings. <laughs> take it all off, yeah. The exhaust tips are cool. The exhaust tips are cool. Yeah. It is fitting that they offer this in purple for many reasons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see one in yellow. Yellow's a good They used to color. do yellow yeah. on the last gen, mm -hmm. on the, just, yeah, the, the gen bad. previous to this. Are you locked out? Yeah, if the window was down, I could just hop okay. in. Yeah. Still could, you just need a higher jump. That's true. Ugh. Very ah. tasteful and intelligent uh, interior here. You've got some cross-stitching, very cockpitty. Um, I still like iDrive 7. Okay. Yeah, the seat was an Alyssa spec. Uh, you have a big shelf right here with this is a, what I, a net. This is what I was going to ask you, mm -hmm. is if it got iDrive 8, but I'm glad that it hasn't. No. I was riding in my mother's X3 the other day, which mm -hmm. has this exact infotainment system, and I was reminded of uh, how good we used to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so easy to use. <laughs> iDrive 8 like, is oh kind of like we've gotten used to it, it's fine, but it's... Yeah. Uh, also, so. you can still have skis <gasps> in, the, in the Z4. Of course you can. Yeah, so you yeah. could... I mean, they might hit your iDrive at 7, but... You can have them. I drive what? Seven. Seven! Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get this thing going here. How's the Harman Kardon? Wouldn't know. All I've listened to is B58. All you've listened to is um, blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent car. Uh, let's get it. So uh, we should clarify, Charlie's been driving this for three days. Yes, this is my uh, super raw first impression. I have not driven it yet though, so my, yeah. I haven't even, I haven't been You've in never it. Never been in a so, Z4. Well, one of these gen Z4s, right? Yeah, the only Z4 I've ever been in is my buddy Matthew had one in college, and it was beautiful, manual. Matthew Matthew? Matthew Matthew had a Z4. That's good. I think it was just slowly rolling yeah. forward of the parking lot. What year was his? I think his was like a 2006 or seven. It was a, it was a first gen Z4. Gotcha. And it was like old fart ownership, low mileage, manual. Oh, what? I'm gonna be a menace in this oh, car. It's so good, dude. I, <laughs> it's interesting, because the last time I drove a Z4, it was either right before, right after, or along with, I think it was the same week as 
a beautiful yellow Boxster manual. Uh, and I was a bit ruined because the Boxster is more of a driver's car. Yeah. But this Z4 is not characterized by being a Hoonigan machine, contrary to what you think of that exhaust. Yeah. It's remarkably planted in the back, and it makes for not that much fun driving around. It's not like a Supra where you kind of like wiggle it around. It doesn't yeah. do that. Okay. It makes for a better track car, but a little bit more of a boring street car. But with the top down, you hear the turbo noises, you hear the exhaust. Oh my God, it's a rocket. Oh, it's so fast. 3.80 to 60 according to car and driver. And it's, it's just the right bit of kind of body roll and uh, great little cabin here. Of course, the ZF8 speed, fantastic transmission. It's so quick. Yeah. I have had so much more fun driving this than I did the M8 competition. I mean, this is just so much more of a pure car. Oh, listen to that. I know. The wind. It's barely any oh, I'll look this way. So you feel the trans the suspension's kind of yeah. it's, it's not good for them. It just yeah. sort of like gets out of sorts. Yeah. But you don't need to drive it like that. You can simply leave the traction control on and you just kinda you know flip that. It's so loud. I know. You could hurt some feelings with this car. Pulling up next to somebody that's unsuspecting and just absolutely destroy them. Sending him to Gapleby's. traction control back on too. Yeah. Yep. And of course in proper B58 fashion you hardly even hear the engine, especially if you go to Eco Pro. And the ride has been impressive too. You'll see we'll go over a rough ride section here at 55. Not a single creak or rattle in this car. Very well. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. Can I do the fuel economy test with the roof now? <laughs> I, there was a Mustang I think we had a long time ago where I, is either Mustang or, or Corvette where I did it both ways. I did a 50 miler with it up and then 50 oh my miler God. with it down to compare. Yeah, what was the difference? I think it was like 3 or 4 mpg. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm surprised it was that, that much of a difference. Yeah, it's a good, that's why you haven't seen any EV convertibles yet because they're very, it's very yeah. not. Well, Rolls Royce is making, or no, who's making it? Oh, Genesis. Yeah, Genesis really? has the concept for one. Well, Mini yeah. is actually going to make one. Okay. But it'll probably only have like a It'll have 75 because it's convertible. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, this is excellent. Yeah. I'm excited to drive it. Right. Top goes up very fast. We'll just demonstrate here. You can obviously be driving up to speeds of some decent speed. I was going to say, what's, what does it I don't know. make? No. At least like 30. Already done. And you know what? It doesn't feel horribly cramped in here with the roof up. No. You've actually got a pretty good amount of headroom in here. Yeah. Uh, it feels more roomy than the Supra. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. This okay. is in many ways a better car than the Supra, but it's not as much of a Hoonigan car as the Supra. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of weird. So this is like a Supra for old people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the seat's cozy over here. Mm -hmm. I didn't really pay too much attention over there. Should be the same seat, but observe things differently when you're in the driver's position. Totally. This car starts at $66,000. Oh, so you could just have a Lexus IS500 for the same price. Yes, but you can't drop the roof on that. That's true. You could with a Sawzall. <laughs> You'd have to pay for the Sawzall. That's then. true, yeah. A little extra cost. 
Uh, Thunder Knight Vitalik only costs you $650. The Black Alcantara, where the heck's Alcantara in this car? Uh, oh, here. Oh, okay. Uh, that costs you $1,200. The Active Driving Assistant and Lane Departure Warning is $700. Uh, the Shadow Line Package, thousand bucks, journalist spec. 19 inch wheels are $600, premium package. You can tell who drove here this morning in a convertible and who drove in a sedan. Yes. Yeah. Does it have wind scarf? Don't believe so. Yeah. It might be an option. Uh, the Harman Kardon is $875. Wireless charging, 500 bucks. Who's paying $500 for that? 50 years emblems, $200. I do love knowing that these BMWs have remote start. Because I've just triple tapped that button so many times now. Oh, yeah. Just started it Did I inform you of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think TikTok informed you. The steering wheel feels nice. It's like very soft. $74,000 for the final price. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Uh, oh, we have to do, we have important work to do. Yes. Does it have launch control? It does. No. It's not remarkable, but it's, it's good. And you failed to engage. Uh, oh, because I'm in manual. That's go. why. <laughs> Not remarkable. <laughs> it's pretty dang quick. It is quick. Yeah, Just started doing a burnout I was manual. Say, once it started getting grip, it, it, it does take uh, That was on purpose because I wanted to heat my tires up. Of course, of course. Smart man. Isn't that just fantastic? <laughs> also, Sport individual mode is set up in the proper spec right now where suspension's comfort, steering's comfort, but uh, engine is Sport Plus. Gotcha. What a thing. Yeah, this is great. I always thought of the Z4 as kind of like a bland vehicle. But uh, this is not bland. No. It's very spicy. No, I do think we need to sing the praises of this car because uh, I don't know if they've made some tweaks since the 2020 model year or what, but uh, this is much more fun. <laughs> and for being rear wheel drive, it's very planted. It's they super really planted, stuck yeah. The butt on this car. And I, I, the first year that they both came out, we had a Z4 and a Supra on track. And the Supra was squirrely and all over the place unpredictable. This was so easy to flog on track. Yeah. Which I don't think anyone's taking these out on track, but it shows you that you can drive them performance. There you go, Chris. Yeah, 04 Rich. Yeah. I like the brown. All right, let's go back into drive, comfort, traction control on. Golf respect. There you go. Can you fit golf clubs in this car? I don't think you can. I think you could. Back. Could you? It's a pretty wide truck. I mean, if not, you could throw them in the passenger seat. Right. Alyssa and I went and did the proper uh, Saturday night convertible activity with this. Drove to Ann Arbor and got ice cream. Well, we're going to be spending the week with the BMW Z4 M40i yeah. in Thunder Night Metallic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get you some impressions and let you know how it is. I'm going to be road tripping this, yeah, probably. Take, take a look uh, if, in the link in the description if he remembers to put it for the Topher Drives video. That's on right. If it's road tripping the Z4. Yeah, if it's up before this. Yeah, it probably won't be. But, probably won't uh, be. Because I'm doing one video a week. So. Topher. Yeah. Or not the Topher. Topher yeah, Drive. You're just confusing people more, Charlie. Yeah, I know. Well, it's your guys' fault for having the same name. Yeah. Actually, it's your parents'. Yeah, fault. it's my bid. Yeah, it's our parents'. Lisa and Corinne. Corinne. Come on, guys. Anyways, uh, drive on. We're wrapping up all week with the BMW Z4, and Charlie, you are a big fan of this car. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, who would think that we'd have two cars next to each other, and it would be the compact crossover that looks the best? You think so? I mean, I quite like the way this looks. I like the rear. The, I, um, I'm not also, sold on the front. I've also decided that this is one of my favorite BMWs. It's so good. Um, it's so good. And we kind of went into this thinking, oh, this is kind of just like the dull version of the Super, but it isn't. Oh, yeah. I just realized I can't it, it gets upset that. when you get when you get close to it. Yeah. Um, but I took this car on quite a long trip. Yeah, you did. And it kind of validated for me that this could be a one-car solution for somebody. Really? Because it doesn't beat you up. And it's easy to take on long-distance trips, and we'll talk a little bit more about that on the road. But Did you bond with it? 
a little bit, unfortunately, and I'm really, really sad to see it go. I'm sad to see it go, too. I didn't want to give you the keys. So much so that when we traded, instead of getting into this, I got into that. You got into to, this. To That's ease right. my, uh, and then that thing is it's pretty tired, so I was like, okay, well, I'm ready. <laughs> it's pretty. An electric vehicle. Be nice to her. <laughs> oh, it's a her. It. And, uh, this is a bit unfortunate. So this is the thing with this car. Um, if you have a passenger, they can't have an armrest. <laughs> or you just can't have a drink. Yeah. Did, did so. you find this thing to be useful at all? This big net. Ah, uh, so there's an issue. Okay, and so already we've identified two issues. Well, this before no, 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 no. Hold on a second, because this isn't an issue with this car. This is an issue with Apple CarPlay. Okay. When you get into a car with CarPlay uh -huh. nowadays, I don't know Just why it does this now. Car. And you have Spotify open. Okay. It plays it through the phone. It's like a glitch. That's frustrating. So okay. For me, anyways, it's done that. I don't know. Right. New core. Um, yes. I need to just close Spotify. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to relocate your water bottle so that I can have oh, an arm. To where? Mm. <laughs> I was already, oh crap, I have things in there. You can't tell I took this on a road trip, can you? Um, did you show up to your buddy's house going, bah, 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 bah. Yes, I did. And then, you know what's, what's funny is I went down to uh, Kaufman Mayer in Peoria to see my buddy Sean. BMW. And, and as I pull up, they are... Do, uh, going on a test drive in a new M3 Oh no! because uh, they just put a like a racing clutch in it mm -hmm. so they're like hopping in I pull up and they're like oh come on come in with us and we went out and drove spiritedly in this M3 and it was hilarious <laughs> as soon as I got there like <laughs> I stepped out of this car and into and an like, M3 it was so funny uh, so anyways first thing you do is go into sport and then you click over into S then you click over into manual and you hear burr, 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 burr. <laughs> It's just such an obnoxious overrun, it is. and I love it so much. It's as though someone told BMW, you know, the Z4 is a bit lifeless, and they said, we'll fix that, yes. and then they did. So you've driven other Z4s of this generation, yes. and they weren't like this. No, so is it, So this is like the facelifted it. thing. I, some, somewhere along the line, they must have changed that. I want to talk to BMW PR and see if they'll give us a straight answer on what happened. But LCI and Burbles. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Life cycle burble, Life cycle LCB. Burble. Um, did you notice though that at least take away the power and the sound, and this car is a bit dull. It doesn't like doesn't jump out at you the way the Supra does from a driving perspective. Yeah, definitely. It's it's very safe. Um, but I like that in a car. Oh, I, I know you do, and I think a lot of Z4 buyers would. But you could mat the throttle, fully turn on one in this road, and it won't slide out on you. Yeah. I mean, it really is a buttoned down car and when you drive it next to other drivers cars that's not really uh, what you're looking for so I'm glad that they gave the Z4 a level of identity that allows it to stand off just being a knob is, is yeah essentially what, it, what they gave it and going very fast oh, oh. Also, I love how it is sewing machine smooth. Oh yeah. When you when you take off, it's just such a perfect inline yeah. section. Yeah, and even the ZF8 speed, which we know is a fabulous transmission, the they've tuned it in such a way when even when you're in sport, it's just silk. Yeah. I mean, it yeah, doesn't it, like, it doesn't it doesn't do that yank your head back just for the yeah. sake of being aggressive. You have to shift around 5,000 if you want it to fart because if you shift higher, it just shifts smoother. Okay. So fart tips from Mr. Yeah. Power. You can also. Ooh, you've gotten good at that. Yeah, you can just you can just keep it going forever. <laughs> Because if yeah. it's too much more, if we were in an M car right now, full blown M. Oh, I would be terrified. Well, yeah, and you'd map the throttle and you'd be immediately in prison. It would just be <laughs> here, right. jail. Jail immediately. But this, you can actually full throttle at some, shift through a few gears, and then let off, and you're still not in prison. Yes. And that's a good thing because I don't think we'd like prison. No, I don't either because you yeah. can't drive C4s in prison. That's right. Maybe if they had like a prisoner, like kind of redevelopment program where they had Z4s on a track, then people would uh, yeah. be reformed faster. Oh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. 
sitting in the passenger side, you almost hear it more because it yeah. seems like it's coming out of Come the Come on, man. So when you did your trip, I assume most of it was with the top up. Yeah, I how, did how I did top, top down unless I was going like over 55, which yeah. was most of it. Yeah. And, uh, well, it was good. Okay. Uh, but the, so you, you can't see it right now, but when the top is up, there's this big plastic trim piece that sits right here. And it rattles terribly. Really? Because um, the rest of this car is very solid. Yeah, well, there's also a rattle over here with the roof down. Um, so the way I kind of summed it up in my video is that it's essentially perfect for, for what I needed to do. But I had to just crank the stereo because I could not stand listening to this car rattle. I mean, you, you can hear this one right here. Right, I can. Yeah. Let's talk about the stereo for a moment. Not fantastic. No, the JBL and the Supra is better, but I don't think this one is as terrible as you were... I mean, you said it was C-tier, which I guess I can kind of agree yeah, with. Yeah, because it just... It, the balancing just seems all off. You, you turn up one of your favorite songs and you're like, I need more of something. Why am I just getting this ear-piercing, like... It is screechy. Yeah, screechy right yeah. in here and it just and it's a shame because I there's a lot of speakers and I know it could sound so much better there's just something between the two three and four series from like 2018 until now that just haven't been any good yeah I don't know what's up with that yeah it's a bit of a shame because remember and I know they're different cars the, the, the other one costs three times as much but remember that SL63 we were in and it had the just S tier beautiful um, was that car 200 grand that one is about $200,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you could get that system, I think, starting around like low ones. And so it's it's not like just by being a coupe, you have to have poor audio. Right. And if BMW wants to be this real luxury lifestyle sort of brand, just do a little better in the audio system too. Especially for the optional system. I just listened to the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. I did a bit in my Topher Drives video. Oh, did you? Um, where I brought popcorn with me for my intro. Oh, pop, because it pops. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know how I like do some eating? Yeah. My, so I, you know, it was like a bit. Yeah. Anyways. You're, you're going to be the first one to have a full-fledged, like, eating and car YouTube channel. Well, essentially, right. you're just James May, let's be honest. Yeah. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. He likes wine, too. You can't have that while you're driving, but. Well, not here. Not here. You can actually you can do it on can... boats, can't you? Yeah. Can't you do it while sailing? Yeah, are you a boat enthusiast? No. Is that just because you didn't grow up near water? No, I actually grew up uh, going to my uncle's cottage, and he had a boat. But was it a sailboat? I feel like you'd be more of a no, sailboat it was a big, enthusiast. No, it was a big... Uh, no, it had a 454 in it. 454? So satisfied with this car and I put out a feeler earlier at the beginning of the week to kind of see what people were curious about with it okay a lot of people talked about the cost let's talk about that for it's a quite while. expensive but is it because what uh, else can you get that's cheaper a three-year-old LC 500 convertible that's about the same price because we've looked yeah yeah but that's that's a three-year-old car and it's true. You're right. That would that would be quite good. Uh, okay, so brand new. Yep. What could you get for seventy three thousand? That would kind of scratch the itch of this car. A lot of the options that come straight to mind are all hard tops only. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what's oh, an F type. But I think I'd have this over an F type because you can't get like the good F. Well, no, you can't have an F type for this anymore because they're all V eights and they're all hundred grand. Yeah. And they're disappearing after twenty twenty four anyway. That's really sad. Uh, Mercedes won't sell you an SLK anymore, will they? No. Miata is like half the price. And a quarter of the enjoyment. Yeah. Uh... It's just the Boxster. And the Boxster is an entirely different car. Oh yeah, the 718 Boxster. Yeah. Well, a base you, one wouldn't cost more than this, yeah, would it? But, yeah, but you don't... This doesn't compare to a base car. This would compare Boxster. to an S. Yeah. Well, it would really compare to a GTS, because you got to get that 4 liter. Because oh, of, true. You know, if you, if you want any of the two, the two or the two point five, you're just hearing the little four cylinders. It's not the same sort of because then you'd have to compare against this four cylinder, which is an entirely. Oh, this comes thing. in a four cylinder. Yeah, I didn't you get know. The 30 I had no idea. Okay. I've just been doing that all week. So, so yes, it's expensive, but when you figure you could you could spec one of these out without a lot of the journalist packages and everything for about seventy thousand dollars. And you could probably get it in an MSRP because dealers probably aren't, you know, just Without throwing the journalist packages. 
I don't think it's really that terrible. I mean, you really are getting a premium luxury car experience in here. Yeah. You can cruise at 55, have a nice conversation in this windscreen. It isn't it blustery in here, no, it's nice. I mean, I'd have this because I'm civilized, but... Right. The Mustang's a lot more, and then we haven't driven the new one, obviously, but it's, it's a lot more bovine. It's a lot more kind of lazy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Mustang would be a good good call. You're right. I, I, weirdly enough, I think that's the closest competitor. But a Mustang feels pretty cheap inside, and this actually feels quite premium. Aside from the rattles that you yeah, Except out, it rattles like crazy. Yeah. yeah, this feels like a really nice place to be. And I would say Camaro, but you can't have one of those anymore. Yeah. After next year. I think if we had this car out in the Malibu Hills last year, it would be so great. Oh, this would have been fantastic. Because it's out. just small enough yeah. to really feel nimble. You'd be hearing that pops of burbles off the canyon walls. Yeah. Sundown. Well, you can do so here. Just uh, right. shortly if you book one for yourself. Might have to. I love the snappiness when it's in sport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the throttle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they really dialed this in well. That was a good well. one. And interestingly, a lot of the, the comments I got on the post was, I didn't even know the Z4 exists anymore. And it's really a shame because- They don't market this car very well. Well, they don't market this car very well, and that's kind of hard, John. That's why we have it. Here. Oh, right, right, yeah. well, we're doing so. Yeah, and I, it's sort of a chicken or the egg thing because convertibles are sort of dying out. And then manufacturers are going, oh, well, no one's buying convertibles, so we're gonna stop making them. But, then you have this excellent convertible. Why are convertibles dying out? Well, because I think they're not marketed well, and I think, this is the thing, I think people are a bit dull as a People society. are dull. And they, they're they like, well, I could get a convertible, but it's not very practical. Yeah. And so they get something like that. that like Nissan. a Ford Edge. Well, well, actually, both of those. The two perfect example cars just drove right by. That's actually quite That's good. That's Brooklyn Gray, that looks nice. Yeah. So I, I really do think if you're even one of those people who is like on the fence, like, man, I'd like to own a convertible someday, but I don't know if right now is the right time. Now is the time. Go out, get yourself a Z4, because it yeah. really... Oh, okay, because you... Because you could <laughs> die tomorrow. So you might as well get a convertible today. The brakes are great. It's fantastic. It doesn't like going sideways, really. No, it really understeers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had one of these out on track, and it was excellent. Okay, was really I believe good. that. So you could actually, remember, <laughs> we had a, an M Roadster out on track from the mid-2000s. Oh, yeah, the yeah, And that was a joy. Z4. Yeah. And I think this would be a joy to be just out on track as well. You'd have the top down, your helmet on, and you're just shifting through gears. And you know that was the last M Roadster? And stuff. Yes. And they just stopped. They just stopped. Well, yeah. again. That's okay though, because I don't think this would be good in M form. No, it'd be worse. It'd be, stupid. It'd be worse in just about every one. Yeah. Yeah, this this was really a treat. And I and as you said at the beginning of this section of the video, we both kind of went into this thinking, like, alright, well, you know, we'll just the Z4, that'll be cool. We'll have some top down. Yeah, but we probably but no, enjoyed I, it. This has been one of my favorite cars this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna get into the GV, the electrified GV70, and I also quite like that car. We've had a lot of really good cars over the last month we or have. two. And this still stands out. So the question for me, and I know my answer to this, would you have this over the Supra? Apples to apples, similar spec, similar yeah, price. Yeah, 100%. I would as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was another question that people asked, is, is this or the Supra? This obviously costs more, but... But it's got unlimited headroom. Yeah, unlimited headroom. And the Supra, you can't breathe in it because it's so claustrophobic. Right, the Supra always feels like you're trying to be something. That's this true. feels like a car that you're like, like, okay, I'm meant to be driving this car. That's right. This yeah. feels proper. This feels nice. Everything just feels like the right place to be. I was able to use the unlimited headroom thing yesterday. Did you um, put because, a thing in here? No, I had to turn around and yell at somebody. Because I was, I, I was stopped at a roundabout. Traffic was flowing through it. Okay. This woman pulls up next to me in an Explorer, or next to me, behind me in an okay. Explorer ST. And honks at me as and traffic is flowing through the roundabout. And I turn around, I look at her, she goes... She wasn't really being aggressive, but she goes, go, you have the right of way. And I said, 
are, are you serious? I'm, if I pull in there, I'm going to get smashed. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, no, you have the right of way. Go. You don't have I'm the like, right of way. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, don't you see the yield sign? I'm like, there's a That's yield. Me. There's traffic flowing. If I pull in, I'm going to cause an accident. And then she just like shakes her head at me. And I'm like, okay, well, you're wrong. And I said that. Wow. Um, and then just is when the roundabout cleared up, I went and. She didn't like rage with, like I said, she wasn't being aggressive. She was just like, you can go. And I'm like, no, I can't. So, those people vote. Those people vote and uh, she's going to die. Like she's going to crash. Yeah. And she's going to cause someone else to crash. Yes. You're going to be un- coming through the roundabout and properly. When I, so and if, she's going to pull right off. If you live in right Ipsy, uh, beware of a gray Explorer ST with black wheels. Which because, you should always be aware of. Which you should always be aware of. Yeah. Because they think they're cops. Yeah. But anyways, uh, because that woman is unhinged. Unhinged. It's probably on hinge as well. Probably. <laughs> no, she was like a mom age. Okay. You know how boomers get. You know how boomers get. Anyways. Let me look through our post again real quick and see... Uh... Oh, any other questions to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, this is automatically a good car because it comes in purple. Didn't we decide that? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, if a car is offered in purple, it's kind of defaulted right there. Yeah. And we're definitely in our... Well, probably one of our final Paris and Nicole eras with this car. Uh, w- Yes, but we do have a Bentley coming. That's true. We do. That's going to be final, about that. final form. Paris final Nicole. form of Paris and Nicole. <laughs> Let's uh, see here. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, why the hell it costs so much? We talked about. We that. talked about that. BMW could essentially charge whatever they want because there's really nothing outside of Mercedes SL, Lexus LC500, Jaguar F-Type, and Boxster, and then the, the American. Yeah. So this is really um, the cheapest choice. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, as a super owner, I miss the convertible option. Yes, I do. That's yeah, they should totally do great. the super Targa thing. Here's the hardest question I got: this or M240i? This. I mean, I'd pick it's this the as same well because car. The convertible. It's the same thing. It's just no roof. Right, right, right. But you get the two seats and a little more extra oh, trunk it's, space. Oh, seat. Well, the roof seats are actually this? decently. If you usable live somewhere it snows, you get the M240i because X drive, X drive, and the hard top. Yeah. This, if you live anywhere that gets sunshine, you get this. Yeah. So if you live in Alaska. You or Antarctica. The, you get the, you M240 get the M240i. I. Okay. Anywhere else. They you both get come in Thunder Night. So. Yes. I uh, love that color. How does it compare with new M2? Uh, better in most ways. Yeah. It's not this is the crazy M2. Fast, the, I like but, the, I like the new M2, but I enjoy driving this more. What do you like the styling of better? The two series or this? This. Really, I like this the two series. This is less better. offensive. Okay. Yeah. Z4 versus Supra. Worth the price increase. Yeah, definitely Z4. The ride. The ride is quite good. The ride I was is impressed nice. By that. Yeah. Yeah. Why is there no manual? Would this be better with a manual? I think it would. Because you would kind of nice lazy shift through it. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be BMW fine. is not very great manual. And mm-hmm. I do like being able to just put it back into auto mode and cruise. I drove a good manual BMW last week. I don't think I told you about it yet. Oh, what? I drove and reviewed for the Topher a manual E38 7 Series. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised that wasn't splattered all over your social. Yeah, well, I was saving it until the review is going to go live because I want to okay. hype it up. You know, that's awesome. Was it but, great? Oh, it was one of the best cars I've ever driven. Because it was it was sold new in France, still owned by its original owner, seventy seven thousand miles, mint. Whoa. How did he say? And it was a V eight V eight manual original. They didn't make that here, did they? No, only in Europe. That's beautiful. It just happened to be being serviced, and the guy is super the owner is super cool, and was like, yeah, sure. So Where? I, huh? Where? Can uh, Calvin Mayer, and and when I was with Sean. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, what is the real consumption? This is the longest end of a review we've ever done. Uh, So real consumption in uh, highway driving at around 78 miles per hour, it was doing like 35 mpg, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, if you look at it, you can tell it's pretty slippery, especially with the roof up. Um, And then in combined driving, you know, 20s, mid 20s. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, uh, that'll wrap it up for us today. Thank you all for hanging out and uh, sticking around till the end with us. I like the wheels, that they're so open, you can really see the brake calipers. Yeah, the badges look tiny, but that's just because they're the anniversary badges. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. We are Paris and Nicole with Daily Motor, and as always, Pops Thunder Night on. on. Oh, I'm actually kind of surprised. No, well, we'll keep them both, because okay. they're both relevant. Sure. Yeah. And also drive on. Purple brake calipers would have been cool. Yeah. Perp caps. <laughs> <laughs>